Shalom Aleichem. My friends, it's Tisha B'Av, Tov Tess, 2019. I'd like to share a story that happened 90 years ago exactly this afternoon in Yerushalayim, Mira in the year 1929. I heard this directly from Rebbe Avram Eisenbach, who was an 11-year-old boy, and the story involves him as well. The Friedrich Rebbe of Yosef Yitzchak, the Rebbe Ayatz, was in Eretz Yisrael, in the Holy Land of Eretz Yisrael, 1929, during the summer. And he was there on Tisha B'Av as well. On Tisha B'Av, he was at the Adamski Hotel at 5 Ben Yehuda Street. We all know about Ben Yehuda Street. It's so popular. Well, the Friedrich Rebbe stayed there at a certain hotel. On Tisha B'av. It was Tisha B'av afternoon, and the Rebbe's secretary, Rebchacha Fagin, came running to another shul called the Ran Shul. The Ran Shul was named after Rabbi Menachem Mendel Rand, who came from Europe in the early 1900s, and he established a court, and the court became known. Botiran because they were housed, they bought houses, uh, you know, in the court, and there was a well in the middle, and he built a shul, and the shul has ever since been known as the Ran Shul, and very special Yidin davened there for the last hundred years. Amongst these Yidin were a group of Jews called the Yakire Yerushalayim, the most precious and special Jews of Jerusalem, and they were given this name because of their learning, their praying, their sincerity, their love for another Jew, and most importantly, their Yirash Mayim, their awe for HaKadosh Baruch God Almighty. And it was, they left kind of Meir Sha'arim and they moved up here, you know, not that it's a very long walk, it's only about 20 minutes one to the other, but nevertheless, it was a departure from Meir Sha'arim to this new section that was built for them. And Rabbi Avram was a little boy in 1929, and his father, Rabbi, Rabbi Chaim Hersh Eisenbach, was one of the Yakira Yerushalayim. Four years before 1929, in 1925, a great Chabad Chassid came to Eretz Yisrael. His name was Rabbi David Tzvi Chain. His acronym was Radatz. And the Radatz was a chassid of the Rebbe Marash. I think he also saw the, 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 the Tzamach Tzedek, but primarily the Rebbe Marash and the Rebbe Rashab. And he ended his life in Yerushalayim in 1925. These Yakira Yerushalayim, Rebbe, Rebbe Chaim Hersh, uh, Eisenbach, and several others, found out about him, and they started to learn Chabad Hasidus with him. And just seeing this personality, who people say was like a malach, and even we have a picture of him. If you take a look at his picture, you'll see that you're talking about a, an angel, a very special yid. And they learned with him, and they were so impressed with his, his, his Yerasha Mayim and his personality that Although they were Hungarian, Galician Jews and were Tzanzer Hasidim, other type of Hasidim, they weren't Lubavitch Hasidim, and for that matter, they might have never even heard about Chabad Lubavitch. But they were introduced to Lubavitch, to Chabad, through this Rebdovitz Vichay. He only lived about six months in Eretz Yisrael, and then he passed away. This was in 1925 when they had a Hasidic shear with Reb David Tzvi Chain, the Radatz. So when the Rebbe came in 1929, four years later, when Reb Chacha Fagin came running into the Ran Shul on Tisha B'av at Mincha time, saying the Rebbe doesn't have a minion for Mincha and he needs someone, if a few uh, can come, if you, you can come to help make the minion. Reb um, Chaim Tzvi, Chaim, Rebbe, um, Chaim Hersh, Eisenbach, 
took his shulka. Shulka is the Yerushalmi outer garment that they wear. It's kind of brownish on top of their regular uh, kapota, shirtuk. And he put it on, and he took little Avram, who was 11 years old, by the hand, and they walked from the rancho to the hotel to help make the minion. Now, just to understand what that means, the, the yololis, the crying, the tears, the feeling of holiness in the Ram Shul on Tisha B'av was real. It wasn't just saying words of kinnis or Eicha, but here were people who were really mourning the destruction of the Beis Amigdash. The fact is that the Ram Shul, it's in the Nachlaot section of Yerushalayim, is only about a half an hour to 45 minutes walk to the Kaisel. And in fact, this Avram Eisenbach told me that for 38 years, ever since you were able to go to the Kaisel, he walked every day to the Kaisel. And when he was older, when I knew him, and he couldn't walk any longer, a Lubavitcher would come. I think his name was Schleimer, not Reines, Ryans. And he would come and pick him up and take him. In the middle of the night, three in the morning, they would go to the mikveh, and four, they were at the kaisel, and they davened their vosikin, the first minion when the sun rises. So you have to understand that you're talking about here a person and people, the Yakiri Yerushalayim, for them to leave, but they ran, the ran shul on Tisha B'av is like splitting the Red Sea. It's a tremendous departure, a spiritual departure from what they're used to and what they want and what they're seeking, which is mourning and saying nachim, the most holy prayer that we're going to say this afternoon, nachim, for the rebuilding of the Beis Amigdash. And he left that aura and he left that presence. And they went with Rav Chacha Fagin to the Frida Kerebe to help him make a minion at his hotel. Why did they do that? They did that because they were so impressed with the Radatz, who they knew was a Lubavitch a Chassid. They said, if this is a Chassid of Lubavitch, needless to say, the Rebbe, who's so special, we need to do whatever he asks of us. And they went to help make the minion. I heard the story from Rabbi Avram, Eisenbach himself about 15 years ago, and today is exactly 90 years from when the story happened. May Hashem help, may God help, that we see the rebuilding of the Beis Amigdash yet today, so that before we say Nachem, we will see and be with all the Tzadikim in Eretz HaKodesh and Eretz Yisrael, in the Holy Land of Eretz Yisrael, immediately with the coming of Mashiach now.